Sunday. Side by side at the microphone from the green light to the speed trap. Ray Garino and Jody calls them as they seize them, and you better believe them. Here, relevant news, biased opinion, and outright nonsense regarding every aspect of automotive culture. Gas with mechanical trickery never before broadcast over FCC regulated airwaves. Thrill to the explosive tension as Ray and Joe cuss each other down track. Barrel roll across the finish line, laughing at certain disasters as they shake hands with the devil. <laughs> All that and so much more at high noon this Sunday on the Motormouth Radio Hour. Call in and speak live with the wizards of speed and the live eat, Ray Carino and Joe D. Bring the whole family. Kids under 12 get in free every Sunday at noon on WHBC. Take the Hempstead Turnpike to the Meadowbrook Parkway and look for the no parking on the expressway and no express service on the parkway sign. Go right on Highway 24 to Garden City. $2 all-day parking includes pit pass. Eat you know what? It's it's the new year, so with Motormouth, <laughs> you never know. We just come in sideways, crashing into the wall. We'll leave a stream of smoke and parts and all sorts of broken stuff. <laughs> so anyway, you found us at the bottom of the dial, Motormouth Radio, New York's and Long Island's only automotive talk show where you can get quality advice and personal opinions with your host, Ray Guarino, and my co-host, Chris Switzer. Chris, how are you? <laughs> What's up, Right, right. We, we come crashing in just like the new year, just like 2021 and leaving 2020 in the dust. And uh, yeah, it's it's the way the way we do things here. Quality, quality advice. I don't know about that. Kind of questionable, but but uh, good advice, I guess. Nonetheless, how about you? How was your uh, how was your New Year's? Was it safe and sane uh, or do, was it crazy and kooky? No, no, no. It, it, it always is because listen, we're old, so we don't we don't uh, do crazy <laughs> stuff anymore. Um, but I'll tell you what I, I have a I have an interesting story to tell you about New Year's, and I want a little. Uh, I'll, I'll forecast a show a little today because we do turn a new book, turn a new page, and I do have my you know I I've started a list years ago of the Motormouth Radio memorable moments of the year. So. Uh, Ooh. Before you do that, I just want to thank Pirate Paul, my radio brother, for filling in filling in my shoes last week. He did a spectacular job, and I just wanted to say thank you. So let's just get started off with that. But go right ahead. The memorable moments of Motormouth Radio. Well, the mem- 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 Sound like mush mouth. Yes. No, you're right, because that was actually on my list of things to do, too, to thank Paul. Because Paul, you know, he, he's on this memorable moments list, and he, he always has our back. And, uh, you know, yes. when I needed a, a, a co-host last week uh, at kind of at the last minute i thought of okay who can i get that can talk as much as i can who can mm-hmm. fill up a you know f- fill up some topicality and subjects yeah. know about cars and, and mechanical things and, and the things that we deal with on this show more right. more washing machines and whatever and uh and has no problem doing it on a sunday i was like <laughs> paul <laughs> and he Perfect. was available so yes Paul helped out a lot. Thank you, Paul. Always a big. Uh, and I told him last week, Chris, that something that I know you would appreciate. I uh, because of Christmas gifts that were bestowed upon me, I now learn need to learn how to drive my car again. What? Well, yeah. I, one of the things that I had gotten was a couple of pair of new shoes. And if you remember, <laughs> one yeah. of my maladies in life is if I put on a different pair of shoes. Well, not every pair, but many pair. I just can't. My the the pedals in the car feel different to me. I, I know you. You are the only person I know that has to readjust his seat. Yeah. By by the shoes he wears. Yes. yes. Which yeah. is crazy. You so know. I, you, you know that's insane. You know. I know you're, that's you're okay. Insane, right. It's it's my insanity. I did find myself <laughs> with these shoes catching, you know, breaking breaking clutch and breaking gas at the same time. I'm like ah. Wow, what what size shoe were you, what were you wearing? The box? What I mean, what size shoes were they? You would think, and you know what? <laughs> I don't have a big foot. Um, I could use a wide shoe, but I make sure that you know these are Skechers, so they're kind of narrow. Then you know I don't have a I don't have big feet, but it's just <laughs> the just the dynamic. I I'll tell you something. We've talked yeah. about this before. I live in a world of whatever you want to, however you want to call it, um, millimeter. A or you want to call it fractions of an inch because, like, I'll clip just the edge of something, like, with my toe, you know, as I'm walking. And I do it all the time. Oh, and, man. like, in the car, it's just a matter of, you know, a sixteenth of an inch, the way the shoe fits, that, that hits out of the... I'm always on the edge. For, and I keep telling myself, wider berths. Let's go around things a little more. No, I'm, like, catching that draft you, around the corner. You live a life of inches. 
it, well, like I said millimeters or or yes. fractions of an inch. It's because it's just that little bit. You yeah, know, you need some elbow room, my son. I do, I do. <laughs> so anyway, uh, <laughs> that was my uh, my. Uh, you need a Cadillac Eldorado. That's what you need. Well, that's the you need thing. to buy your old one back. <laughs> yeah, I have I have one pair of shoes. I think they're like Doc Martens. I can only wear them if I drive my Impala. Or when I have my Caprice wagon, because that's right. nice big GM braking gas pedal. They're separated by a distance. Actually, yes. now with this FJ Cruiser, I'll be able, I can wear them driving that because it's got a lot of separation. It's truckish. But I can't wear those in the Mazda, any of the Mazda. I can't wear them in the Fiat. No the way. Fiat. No. No, Certainly. you got to drive that barefoot. you got to snip off a couple of toes to drive uh, the Fiat now. We talked about that many years ago on Motor Mouth. Snipping off toes? <laughs> no, we, when you had your Triumph and I had the Fiat, I talked about... You know, the Fiat is, they consider it the Italian busman's driving position. It's kind of like a weird yes. arms out, and you need to have, like, long legs and long arms. It's a very strange way the car is designed. But well, unlike, like, unlike the TR6, where you, the steering wheel is literally at the bridge of your nose, and you're flying it like a soft with camel. It's just yeah. like this, this wooden tiller of some sort. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> I had mentioned at the time what I pictured to be the perfect Italian driving shoe would be, like, those, like when people lose their legs and their feet, and they have those... It, Looks like a little ski that they can run on. You know, those things are fantastic. Uh, uh, not that we would want one, mind you. Oh, no, 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 certainly not. But they would fit perfectly on the pedals of like a, a Triumph or a, or a Fiat. It was like, it's funny, you're saying Italian shoe. I'm thinking Capizio. Yeah, right. <laughs> I drove my Eldorado with the Capizios. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's uh, for sure. It's funny because you talk about a, a life of inches. I have a story that we can hopefully endure later on in the program about about dealing with inches and because uh, uh, something that happened to me this week. But continue okay. on, please, um, with, with the memorable. We didn't even start out yet, but let's say that you know, let's people can get in on this. They can call us if yes. they want to talk to us in the new year. The number is five one six two five six nine five one zero. Write it and down. We will entertain your calls and, and thoughts about all that cool stuff. Um, I did. I started out the new year. Oh my word! I started out the new year. Uh, I guess on a, on a good foot, if you will. We'll keep <laughs> going. Yes. I did work on a car already on New Year's Day. Yes. But at two a.m. Was it an emergency? <laughs> I guess you could say that. It, I didn't wait long. Now, what had happened was, now let me explain. So I got my, I busted, I busted the cherry for 21 already. I've already worked, I've already done, I've done a couple jobs already. So, no, you know, my wife and I went out to dinner on New Year's Eve at yeah. a local place. And we took her car, the cruise. And right. I noticed like, hey, you know, why doesn't the heat feel hot? You know, and I went through problems with that car in the past with the electronic thermostat, and I had changed it. And um, you know, and as I'm driving, we went local, so it was only a you know a matter of a mile and a half. And I'm you don't go anywhere that's not local, Ray. No. <laughs> that's no surprise. Why would I? Um, <laughs> so anyway, I it, it hit me. I'm like, you know what? I remember now for the last week, week and a half, I'd see when, when she would leave, I always, you know, say goodbye, watch him pull out of the driveway, or I'd come home and see the empty driveway spot. I noticed the car had a little bit of a, a leak again, a coolant leak, which those cars are pretty, they're pretty well known for. And I've tracked down and fixed uh, many of them already. Right. So I had it in my head, you know, said to myself, self, look self. into that. So now as I'm driving around of heat, I'm like, you know what? I bet you we're low on coolant. That's what it is. I would think that that would be the simplest uh, remedy, yes. So we get to the restaurant. I happen to park under a nice, bright light. I get out of the car. My wife, she's hightailing it for the, for the restaurant door, and I'm opening the hood. It's like, she, I was, ah! was going to say she is the smarter of the two, but yes. She's the coast. I said, what, what are you doing? I'm like, I got to see. I got to just see for myself. Right. And, you know, I didn't have this with me. You know, oh yeah! Now you're talking. Remember we talked about the the Matco, the Matco headlights. Woo! Yeah. Nice. I didn't have them. I didn't have it with me, but um, I, I, like, did those. I like those. They're oh. they're much they're much more svelter than the one big old clog that I wear on my forehead. To, we can to talk about that a little later. But Thank yeah, you. I did check, and my first cursory glance said, "Okay, the coolant bottle is low." I, so I said to her, "Remind me." You know, obviously, you know. 
no one's going out. Our daughter was going to go to uh, with some friends to a small, very small gathering, but she was being picked up. So I said, okay, the car's going to be home. Remember, remind me tomorrow in the morning and the day to go out there and do that in case I forget. Right. Done. Had dinner, great. Came home, did the whole thing. The ball dropped. We woke up, saw the thing. 2 a.m., my yeah. daughter who was out with some friends had come home, come home right. nice and early from this local event. Okay. And, and now she's in the bedroom talking to my wife saying, I got to take the car because her, her best friend was at, at this event still had something to drink, didn't want to drive, but wanted to go home. So, you know, my wife, I has, see where this is going. Why do you got to take her home? Well, cause she had a fight with her boyfriend. Of course. So she wants to get the hell out of there. It's okay. drama. Been mm-hmm. there many times, right? Yes. So now me, you know, with my eyes closed, hearing this, saying, okay, all right, you know, okay, so just go look at it, and I went, bing, the cooling. When we came home that night, the cooling fans were on full blast. Oh, boy. So this car was getting into that mode with the electronic thermostat of not knowing what was happening. And I thought, I wrongfully thought she had to go about four towns away, and I'm thinking, this could overheat the car. They can get a lot, an airlock and overheat the car. So at 2 a.m., I'm, I get up, and it's like a fire drill. I'm finding whatever pants are there, I'm throwing on, some, slipping some shoes on, a sweatshirt over my head. I put that light over my neck. And, like, where are you going? Don't worry. Outside at 2 a.m., open the hood, open the garage, find the decks cool, add <laughs> coolant so she can drive the car safely. So that was my first automotive repair oh of my 2021. Two hours into the new year, you're out there in the cold. Which was like a half hour after I went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Holy smokes. I uh, did not work on a vehicle on New Year's Day, but I did work on a vehicle yesterday. Okay. So did uh, I. Uh, and I will, let me just give you the word of the day, at least for the first two, well, three days of this year. The word is failure. Oh, boy. <laughs> failure, 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 failure. Did I? Preface. <laughs> yes, you did. Failure. Oh, no. Here's what I did. I'll be real brief. Not to bore everybody. But let me tell you something about Inches Ray. Okay. I have in the garage one of the biggest, strangest vehicles sitting there. That big mama Luke of a Chrysler. Right. And I want to put a power antenna in the car. Sure. Right? So I have figured out how to hook up the power antenna to a regular momentary switch, which took a good amount of time. I was able to do that. I was able to build the harness, put the harness together. So I attach the switch to the power antenna, flip it on and off. It goes up, it goes down. It's a wonderful thing. That is all done and completed. Many, many hours it took to do this. Got that done, right? Okay, it's all set, ready to go. Now it's a matter of going to access the fender on this car. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a joy in itself because I had to pull the two bolts down off the fender like I did many years ago when I had a power antenna issue on my uncle's Cadillac, that 80 Caddy. I was able to pull the bolts, pull the fender out just a little bit enough to access, get my hand in there to access the power antenna down and out. Well, that was on an 80 Cadillac. Not a problem. On a 69 Chrysler, no such luck, Bunky. Really? I was pull the pull the bolts. You couldn't get that fender about maybe half an inch away from the the, the body. I mean, because it was that thick. Yeah, it was not coming up anywhere. Okay, it's water power. Yeah. So now I'm thinking, what else do I do? What else do I do? Failure. Okay. Let's look at the wheel well. Oh, look at this. The wheel well can come out. So a series of bolts. I pulled the wheel well out yesterday. Now I got the wheel well literally on my head. Trying to look in there in the, on the passenger side front wheel. I got the tire off the car, and I'm trying to look in there. Well, what do you know? I see the antenna piece, the little tiny two-inch antenna piece is sitting there. I can see the bottom of it under the fender in there in the fender well. I can see the bottom of it. What do you think is directly under it? The blower motor. <laughs> How big is this blanking car? You would think they would yeah. access a little room. 
No, they put the stupid thing right under the blower motor. I got to pull the blower motor out of the car. I have to do. I have to ruin ruin the uh, the whole idea of heat in the car in uh, order to have a power antenna in there. Oh God, failure. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put the power antenna in today. Okay. I'm going to take the fender well out again because I put it back in stupidly. I put the yeah. silly thing back, and then I came up with this idea after I put the well back in, which was not easy. Right. I came up with this idea. I said, you know what? I'm putting the antenna in on an angle. Okay. I'm going to put it in on an angle, and I'm hoping to get the rake the same as like the eight a- a- pillar. A- I'm hoping okay. to get the rake, the rake like that. And if anybody... Anybody says, where did you put the antenna in on an angle? Yeah. They're going to get smacked in the mouth. Good, 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 good. <laughs> or they're going to get this story, one or the other. Right. <laughs> hey, I, I'll tell you, people will probably be able to see that on social media because we do post our stuff on Twitter and Instagram and on Facebook, of course. We're Motor Mouth Radio on all those platforms as well as our website, except for Instagram, which is Joe's favorite, which is real underscore Motor Mouth Radio, which happens to be my favorite. Um, and, and something else that, that you'll see on there, you will see uh, by our, our web engineers and uh, request, they want to see a, um, the making of the Christmas lasagna that we always do here in the oh, household. Right. So I did do that, and my daughter actually filmed it, and it's up on those, those platforms. You can awesome. see Awesome. Did you so, weigh it? Was it weighed? In yeah, the it ended up being like nine and a half pounds. Um, That's not your best. No, no, but you know, it's you know, I, I figured out why the pan sizes have changed, and I'm limited by the size of the tin. Mm-hmm. They used to be bigger, so therefore right. it holds more stuff. But anyway, ah. that video apparently inspired another one of our our listeners and good good friends because um, another one of our listeners I saw this didn't get posted on social media. This was a, a private affair. Also made a lasagna and an apple pie. Ooh. And, and not together, I hope. No, not together. No, not no, in the no. same pan. So okay, I'd like good. to think that we could, you know, maybe we could take credit for inspiring the lasagna making. And you know, we inspire, we'd like to inspire everybody to make lasagna and do your best at it and, and post pictures and we'd like to share it with you. So we'll, uh, Very true. That'd be cool. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, let me start off this list a little bit with a few things that happened. It's a little sparser this year because, of course, the pandemic kind of screwed everything up. Yeah, of course. But, you know, you know what happens in January every year on Motor Mouth Radio? We're all cold. No, something pretty big. An anniversary. Other than the fact that it's uh, our anniversary. And I think it's today. It is today. Mm-hmm. So last year, of course, we celebrated our 18th year. This now marks the 19th anniversary for Motor Mouth Radio. Today, the 3rd, January 3rd. Oh, gosh. And our this good friend Frank crazy. Abbey... The boat appraiser, he actually reached out to me during the week to, to wish us a, a happy anniversary and a much success and all that. He remembered. So, uh, wow. Yeah. 19, 19 years this 19 year. 19 years of this silly stuff. That's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. yeah we, have time later on, if we have time later on. I want you to give us a, the, uh, a, like a little uh, recap of how the show started because okay. it's kind of noteworthy for people who don't know. But then on the 12th, you co hosted the show via remote from. The, the location you're at right now, which was the mm-hmm. first time you had done that, which was pretty cool. Right. And then on the 19th, you used Skype so you could see into the studio. <laughs> Another yes. platform that didn't work out too well for us. Because <laughs> we were... Right. That was in January? We did... We did uh, yes. Really? It was a year ago that I, I did the show from this location? Absolutely. And the you 12th. were in the studio? The 12th was when you, you did from home, and then the 19th was... Uh, the, the Skype, right? That was the beginning of last year. That was in January. All righty. Well, let's, let me stop you for a second. We're going to yes. go to the phones at 516-256-9510. And we're going to say hi. You're on with the motor mouths. Hey, guys. How y'all doing? Happy New Year. Hey, Brian. It's Hey Matko Man. What's Happy happening? Happy New Year, Brian. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. How about yourself? We're staying safe and trying to stay sane. <laughs> any <laughs> any uh, any New Year's highlights on your end? Uh, just uh, getting ready. Uh, got done doing inventory, which is always fun-filled and exciting. Mm. Wow! You never know. Um, 
you never know what you find when you do inventory. So, uh, <laughs> well, yeah. who you'll find? Uh, and unfor <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, you never find that ten millimeter socket. You're still looking for it. But right. uh, hey, Brian, inventory's you know, always fun. It's funny you should mention that. I was looking for. You know, you talk about the ten millimeter socket, the elusive ten millimeter. Never can find. When I was working on my car, I was looking for the most mundane socket that anybody can trip over and find i didn't have it a short three-eighth size six point quarter inch drive you would think they're everywhere they're everywhere i'm running around the house grumbling my wife is like what's the problem like i can't find this socket <laughs> the shorty three-eighths come on where the hell? I used to eat this for lunch. I can't find it. I was no. literally hysterical. Couldn't find the socket. I'm walking around grumbling. And then you almost got a call. <laughs> I, I actually did buy, <laughs> about a year or two ago, the Snap-on guy had a set of sockets with a flat ratchet. And, and it's very, very low profile, and they're very, very stubby. It's American end metric sockets. And I only had to use it like twice, I think. But when you got to get between a firewall and the back of an engine, yeah. you need room to walk the bolt out, that's when you need that low profile stuff, boy. And, yeah. you know, it's one of those tools that's just going to sit there and look Until, nice. Right. Until you need it, and then it's worth a million bucks. But I got to tell you, Brian, thanks to you, Christmas shopping was easier in my household because I did instruct my wife and daughter, like, listen, get in touch with Brian. Here's a quick list of stuff that I, that I would like. I, and she goes, well, you know, how do I get in touch with him? How do I pay? I'm like, don't worry about paying for it. He'll hit my credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Just put in the order. <laughs> and Brian, I have to say, I have used the new neck light already. Like I said, I used it at 2 a.m. And what, I, you know, I, I wanted one of these for a while, and now I know why. And it, Brian, let me tell you, Ray will never, never would wear a, 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 any sort of light implement on his head. He no. would never do it. So I am, <laughs> I am totally impressed of yeah. your products. If Ray can put a light on his head, because I've had, I've had any sort of a miner's hat with the lamp. I've had candle power. I have everything attached to this noggin. And and Ray would always laugh at me and say, "I'm not ever wearing a light on my head." And you got him to do it. Bravo to you, sir. I applaud you with one clap. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll make we'll made the job a lot easier, hands-free. You know, it's new, new terminology, right? Hands-free. So, right. Mm -hmm. That's good. Very true. Very true. You know, and I'm glad you're doing inventory. How, how, did, the, um, how did the Christmas ball busting event happen? pan out how did that how did that work for you uh, where where your uh, well your clients would break your balls <laughs> well the, the the problem the, what happened well, was, was problem i lost here. the alternator what yeah there was i lost the alternator in the tool truck so i lost the wheat oh no and uh long time of the year so it yeah. kind of yeah it kind of gotten sidetracked it and uh so it, it didn't pan out as well as it should have, okay. but we just carried on through, and uh, well, there's year. always uh, room for the next. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, we, we'll find another reason to bust my balls. <laughs> yeah, well, there's always that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, That's but funny. I did have my own little incident with uh, my F-350, and I thought it was kind of funny. I'll share this with you guys for a minute because it was on the uh, hardware that came with it. And I had to replace a rear brake caliper on my truck. Okay. And I thought it would, I thought it would be simple. Uh, you unbolt it and you bolt the new one on. It comes with, uh, you know, a new, a new guide rails, sliders, bolts. Uh, it came with, uh, the new bolt to hold the brake hose on. Mm. So I go out, I buy all the stuff. It comes in a kit. I bought a new brake hose. I figure 17 years old, might as well replace it all. Why not? I put it all together. I bleed it out. And the thing is leaking like a sieve. Oh. I cannot get it to seal. Wow. I changed the crush seals again. Still leaking, still leaking. And okay. it comes down to the cheap Chinese bolt that they used for the 
uh, to hold the brake caliber brake line to the brake caliber banjo bolt. I it w- <laughs> the banjo bolt. Very oh. right. And I could not determine what size that was because nothing ASC fed on it and nothing metric. So every time I tried to tighten it, it would slip. The wrench oh. would slip on it. Oh, you mean you couldn't find something? So I to finally head. Wow. Yeah, to tighten now, it up. Now, wait, now, Chris, let's the put this truck. in perspective. The guy has a tool. Brian owns a tool truck. I, I was just thinking this, <laughs> Ray. I swear to you, you're taking the thought out of my yeah. head here. I'm like, doesn't Brian have access to yeah. tools? Oh, so what <laughs> chance do we so have? I had, <laughs> yeah, I had every socket. I had every socket trying to figure out. And it must have been something like some 1930 seconds or some bullshit. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> And uh, cut that out. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, no, yeah. So <laughs> yes, I, I kindly, <laughs> I kindly uh, took the uh, bolt back out and chucked it across the street and went and got the old 17 <laughs> year old one right. and stuck back in and. It stopped the leak, so Brian, everything works. Oh I'll tell you something. I, I've had experiences where I change a lot of calipers oh, wow. over the top, and, and we get rebuilt calipers, reman calipers, and, and I've had it where I put put it together, and the actual caliper had a crack in the in the server because the last guy wow. gorilla'd it down. I've had the well, that- I've had the bad banjo bolts, and I got to say this: I I. Not that you're asking for my approval, but I have no problem with reusing a banjo bolt. It's just a piece of hardware. Yeah, it's true. I got a draw. Well, no, no. Full of them. I, mm-hmm. I just, I just thought it was simple. You know, you just right. unbolt the whole thing until and it's I not was simple. Trying to make it as simple <laughs> as possible. You know, that was your first and, mistake, Brian. <laughs> yeah, right. and I had thought in the same thing, Ray. I thought maybe that there was a, a crack where the where the crushed sleeve went, and mm-hmm. you know, I'm crawling around the truck and I'm trying to get as close as I can with a little magnifying oh, glass cool. to look and right. Wow. And after two and a half pints of brake fluid leaking out, <laughs> I just finally took that bolt and threw it as far as I could and put the old 17-year-old one back in. <laughs> That'll do it. Yeah, that sure will. <laughs> I, I believe it. No, and, and that's funny because I do have a series. I don't know where I ended up with them all, but I have a whole bunch of 932nd sockets, 1132nd sockets, yeah, and they're all brand new. I've never used them on anything. I never used them on anything. I have no clue why they're there, but I have them too. You know, l- let me let me just add, you know, my takeaway from this is, and I've said this before, Brian, we've all run into problems like that. I mean, not maybe not specifically like that, but in other ways like that. And I got to say that the American ingenuity and the thing that we do best in this country and mechanics of all of, of all kinds, we make we, we figure it out. You know, we yeah. figure it out. Um, I mean, you could have put a pipe wrench on that thing. You put a put an adjustable wrench. I know you even have the metric adjustable wrenches. Matco co- uh, handles those. <laughs> but, you know. The other thing is, hey, let's put the other bolt back in. You know, it's like we're not going to be defeated. <laughs> Mark in one way or the other. Yeah, that's exactly. the American way. I, 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 I applaud you. Very good. Very well done. Oh, okay. that, so that, that's how I end. That's actually how I ended out the uh, 2020 episode <laughs> of the year. Good. And yeah, exactly. I said, Man, good riddance. <laughs> I'm just glad that I don't throw anything away until I'm done with it. And we'll make sure because or it frustrates you when you chuck it into a field or something. <laughs> <laughs> Have to go out and search all that, but uh, yeah, but uh, wow. no. But I just wanted to give you guys a call and uh, and uh, tell you all a happy new year. And uh, you know, again, love the show, and uh, hopefully. Uh, We'll have another uh, 19, 20 years of uh, entertainment. Right. Thank, well, thank you, Brian. you, Brian. And I know I'm already starting my newest Matco list. There's always stuff that I need. I got, Brian sent me a catalog that I asked for, and like, oh, my God, this is crazy. But, yeah, I'm already starting my new wish lists. Oh, boy. Yeah, I, I may start one myself. That's for sure. <laughs> we, look, we look forward to it. Not a problem, Ray. <laughs> All right, Brian. Not Thanks, a problem, Brian. guys. We'll Thanks. talk soon. Be, be safe. Be safe. Thanks. You All too. Right. Bye-bye. Thanks. 
<laughs> All right, Chris. Five Wilson. one six two five six nine five one zero is the phone number. Yes, that was Brian having a tool issue. <laughs> That's Hey Matco Man. You can find him on social media by yes. by looking up Hey Matco Man, and you can see the stuff that he posts and and all sorts of crazy stuff. And uh, we all we all play the same game. But I tell you what, it's the bottom of the hour. We need to take a break. So yes. I need to know if <clears throat> two thousand twenty one do we have an honor group of the hour. Of course we do. And also, I'd like to bring up, you know, Brian was talking about issues with uh, with sockets and, and threaded banjo bolts. I want to bring up in the next half hour, uh, I did a little experimenting of my own with a stuck thread. And I'd like to talk a little bit about that, hopefully, if we have some time in between our motor mouth radio of, of 2020. <laughs> Yes, but anyway, the Motormouth Radio Honor Group of the Hour, if the inside of your wife's car is a continuation of her purse, at one time, you would find hats, gloves, uh, socks, granola bars in the car, you'd find french fries, whatever have you, a band-aid, you used to find all that stuff, now... You may find face masks, hand sanitizers, surgical gloves. They may be there, too. Usually, if your car, if your wife's car is completely littered, or if your car is completely littered, and if you have to move an array of junk just to sit in the passenger seat of your wife's car or even your car, you're part of the Motormouth Radio Honor Group of the Hour. There you go. Starting off 2021 with a... (laughs) <laughs> with a messy uh, with a messy <laughs> with <Car>. debris <laughs> that's not my car for sure and that's not yours either. no that is not our car I, I was even talking to my wife about this there's not much in our lives that we could interchange that we do the same in fact there's probably very little but that is one thing that we could interchange yes. we do both keep clean cars so that is true that is the list the short list of what you and I agree on <laughs> right exactly so with that We'll take a break. We'll we'll reestablish and pick, play yeah, play a couple of spots, and we'll be back with more Motor Mouth Radio. So keep it where you got it. Ray Guarino, Chris Chris Switzer on ninety point three WHPC. This show on ninety point three WHPC is brought to you by Car Star Celebrity Chase Collision, with two locations in Limbrook and Oceanside. Who we'll remind you that New York State law says you always have the right to choose which shop you want to have your car fixed at. Car Star Celebrity Chase Collision offers a full range of services. 24-hour towing between Montauk and Manhattan, shuttle service, and they can help you with a rental car arrangement if needed. And yes, se habla espanol. More information is available by calling 516-593-0920 or visiting online at CelebrityChaseCollision.com. It's a call-studded program. We do have another caller on the line. Caller, identify yourself. Anthony. I called those guys with the cars one time. Oh, nice. The Motormouth guys. Oh, yeah. Those good old boys. There you are. Anthony, where are you calling from? I'm in uh, Freeport. <laughs> yeah, this morning I miss it. My, my boss was, every time I turn it on, he turns it off. I say, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Yo, you bet, but I mean, I give him a karate chop. That's right. <laughs> give him a karate chop. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Five. Yeah, five. I love it. Later, dude. It's a Yo. pleasure, bro. Take it easy. That was, <laughs> that was amazing. My favorite caller of all time. Maybe all time. I have heard him uh, with the Motor Mouth guys. And that's why I recognized him a little. Whoa. <laughs> These guys are the kings of rock. There is none higher. <laughs> South <laughs> <That was> Cole. <cool. laughs> Shake off the realities of the day, broaden your musical horizons, and embrace the diversity every Monday afternoon at 5 for two hours of revelations. The show offers a potently unique collection of music with an emphasis on themes and rock rarities. An occasional tour de force of blues and soul mixed with compelling sets of folk and folk rock. I'm Steve Kay, and I've got the perfect soundtrack for your drive home every Monday afternoon at 5 on Revelations. Right here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. And we are back with Motor Mouth Radio. Thanks for hanging on, keeping the dial tuned to this fine program so you can find out more of our shenanigans and chicanery and <laughs> stuff with Ray Guarino, Chris Switzer. We're sitting here talking about stuff. Uh, we were going through our list, Chris, last we yes. spoke of the 2020 memorable moments. We go to February. One thing happened in February. 
and one thing mm. only, and it was a good one. What? Your daughter made her debut on Motormouth <laughs> Radio as a caller. <laughs> So that was, and that's a tradition that we've had with our kids. We've, yes. we've integrated them into the show at times. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that's was your right. turn. So she that was came great. Down, she came down to say, hi, Uncle Ray. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's right. Hasn't, hasn't shown up since. Well, that was something. It. Maybe it was prophetic because right after that, the next item I have was when the world changed. And it was March 15th. The college closed by due to coronavirus, and I had a broadcast from Kim's house. Right. Of course, does Thunder Road, the show that follows us, and Kim works at the station, so she had some control. The following week, same thing. No broadcast. We hoped we'd be back. We weren't. Stay-at-home rule. Uh, and then in, on the 29th, we did, were able to broadcast uh, using a Zoom link through Kim's home computer. Right. So it took us about a month to get up to wobble to our feet, but in April... We were broadcasting from home, uh, and on April 12th, we broke, I believe we broke ground for the whole station because we were able to take phone calls through the labyrinth we're using now. Yes. And thanks to Pirate Paul. Thanks to Pirate Paul. He, he, he fleshed it all out for us, and uh, we got this number that's 516-256-9510. Yes. If I told people where the phone call goes, I've told people, and they're like, what? Yeah. It does what? I'm like, yeah, listen, but it works. So, <laughs> barely. <laughs> barely. Sometimes it doesn't, but right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, anyway, in, the, in April, late April, we had Tom Cotter as our first guest uh, uh, through a Zoom meeting with us, which was very good. It was a great interview. And we'll get him back. Yeah. And you can hear that show on Motormouth Radio. Right. Go yes, to motormouthradio.com. That's correct. Uh, also, That's on, right. Thank, thanks to the internet know-it-all. Yes, That's of course. Right. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, then in, it wasn't until May that we're in the, the, the format that we're in now where I took over the, uh, the studio side of it, if you will, and you handle the phone end of it, and our internet whiz handles the, the most important job, the thing that gets us on and off the air live. <laughs> so we ended up making ourselves a triad of... Yes. Like how many? You know, like usually, when you want to make something work right, you take out as many variables as you can. We added them. We brought them in. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we brought in variables, and we needed the internet know it all to do it all for us. <laughs> and we didn't even know it could work, but it did. So that's how we're doing it. But of course, in June, the the, the like a couple of weeks in June seventh, you know, the QGO, which is the program that that puts us on or off the air, it failed, and we had to run off of Zoom audio because. <laughs> like right off the bat, we had a problem. Right, right. But uh, then in July, you stopped at the plane in traffic. Let's let's stop in August because I think we have a. All righty, let's go to the phones at five one six two five six nine five one zero, and let's say hi. You're on with the motor mouths. Hello, hello, happy New Year, boys. Hey, Chassis John, what's happening, brother? Happy New Year, my brother. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm well. You sound good. I'm very well. Yeah, I'm okay. I, uh, I'm fighting with uh, a broken bolt in the door. I'm putting a door. Ah. ah. Now, that's the door of the Firebird yeah. to get everybody up to speed. Mm, okay. Now, th you know. be the 81 going 70. You know, it's funny, John, because I wanted to bring up something about a bolt. I was... I was watching something on YouTube about some guy who took a ball joint, I think it was, and dropped it. He had to get some bolts off the ball joint and dropped it in a container of used motor oil. And he said, forget oh, yeah. about forget about the uh, um, rust bust or any sort of lubricant or penetrant. Forget about that. Use, use, use motor oil and drop it in there. And I'm like, you know what? I remember this guy. I couldn't remember what he was. It, was, it had to be a bulge or something. But what I did was I took the foulest, most disgusting bottom, the, the dregs of motor oil in, in what I have in my container, the runoff from what you put the pan over to get all the runoff out of the pan. I put some of that in a jar and I dropped a threaded bolt with, you know, one of those clip-on nuts that slides in and you send a bolt in, usually use them for, for like oh, yeah, fenders. Yeah, and yeah, right, right. I drop that in there. I let it sit for three days. I take it out and I try to free it. You know what? It didn't work. 
failure again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, failure. Let, let, let me just throw something in because I just uh, through our labyrinth of, of uh, technology, a message just came through. Uh, Dana Parisi just weighed in, and John, she just wants to know, she wants me to ask how your rear end is. <laughs> Doing well. Looking good. <laughs> Excellent. We can't all say that, but that's all, yeah. <laughs> You're starting the year with a good rear end. I like that. There <laughs> and, you go. And even, and even Dina Parisi approved. Exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's, that's a good thing. <laughs> oh, it can never be a bad thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm swapping out old, cruddy door hinges for new ones because the Project Firebird is going to the body shop of Monday. Oh, okay. And unfortunately, uh, I had, didn't have any problem on the driver's side. I didn't have any problem with the upper hinge on the passenger side. I go to do the lower passenger side and the first bolt, I put the socket on and give it a little spin and bam, off comes the head of the bolt. Oh, you snapped it in wow. there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude. So it's it's stuck in that floating plate in the door. Oh, uh, even so worse. I, I went inside and I heated it because, you know, you could see it coming through. Uh, sure. I put some vice grips on it and I'm trying to spin it out the backside. Uh, but then I said to myself, oh, you know what? Oh, my body guy has to remove the doors on this car to do his work. Let him worry about getting that bolt out. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Because he'll literally have the door off the car sitting on one of those, you know, they have those fold-out table things that they work on doors and hoods. He could just drill it out and, you know, use an easy out and get it out of there. I, I mm. put the heat wrench on it, hoping it would loosen it a little bit. I sprayed in some uh, liquid wrench. It, it doesn't want to go, but it would be a heck of a lot easier you know, with the door off the car to do it. It's no sure. big deal. So. Right. Oh, man. You know, it's funny. Man, everything's fine. I got brand new latches. I have brand new strikers, brand new upper and lower hinges. The door is shut so well. I was going to say, John, the, you needed, I mean, I can understand the hinges on a Firebird because, I mean, the, door, the Firebird hinges are awful. On those cars, but new yeah. strikers too. The well, strikers just, you know, there's an easy trick. Yeah, there's a, there's a really easy trick. If you uh, open the door and you take out on the upper hinge, because there's a there's a huge um, like a bolt going through the hinge close to the body of the car, close to the cowl that hides that one bolt on the upper hinge right. because. That piece that's going from top to bottom is the part where you have that spring and that little lever, that detent thing, yeah, sure. which you don't have that on the bottom hinge. So no. on the bottom hinge, if you have the fender off the car, you have access to all six bolts. The one's right. on three right. on the sure. cowl or three on the door. Sure. On the top one, the trick is before you do anything, open the door fully and remove that one bolt that you don't have access to. Right. Then shut the door, take off all the other bolts on the top hinge, the top hinge back, tighten everything, and then open the door and put that last bolt in. Uh. And then you do the bottom. The bottom, you can get to all six. Take them off, put it on, tighten everything, and your door swings. Uh, basically, if you do the right thing, it swings exactly the way it is you know, before you changed anything. Other than the fact that if the hinge is beat up and the bushings are shot and, you mm. know, and the door was hanging. Yeah. So uh, a lot of times you got to go back in and adjust. And uh, I've been able to do that. And I put brand new strikers and brand new door latches. So wow. we're working with all brand new material. You know, so John, it's nice. It's a, real nice. There's a tool that I actually showed our buddy Mike at the body shop. He hadn't seen it before. He's been in a body trade for almost 50 years. I bought it years ago. It's an S-shaped wrench that's made for door hinges on right. a M car. It's it's not only an S, but the S's are like angled a little bit to give you that compound bend. And with that wrench, boy, it makes it so easy to take those. Unless you're working on an early A body like my car where the, the hinge bolts are Phillips head. Like, no. Oh. Right. Oh, oh gosh! Yeah, oh, yeah, that works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, on on the Firebird. On the Firebird and Camaro, 
you have awesome access, you know, to just use your ratchet with a short extension yeah. um, on the ones on the door and a six, 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 six inch extension on the ones going to the cowl and you can get everything out. It's just that one bolt that's hiding behind that post that yeah. the that the spring latch. So you can't even get that bolt out if you loosened it. It doesn't. There's not enough room to pull the bolt out. Oh boy! So, so the fender's got to come. That's off. why if you just if all you got to do is just open the door fully and take that bolt completely out of the hinge, gone, with the door open, no problems, and then close the door and go back to work. <laughs> so that's the first one out and the last one in. Son of a gun. But, uh, other than that, it's good. So uh, today is a year and a week since I was on the show the first time. Oh, okay. Wow. wow. There you go. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Anniversary. We, I was around. the very last. I was on the very last show of 2019. All right. And now the very first show of 2021. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Very uh, cool. Good. And John, yeah, we look forward yeah. to Everybody's hearing. having anniversaries. <laughs> and we look forward to hearing about the progress on this Firebird and then the next one as the time, the months, and the years possibly go by because you're going to be full of stories for us. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. We're looking forward oh, to Oh, yeah. Well, like I said, this, this one's leaving this coming week, uh, Wednesday or Thursday. It's rolling out of here as a gutted 81 Firebird. And it will be coming back as a gutted 1970. <laughs> with all brand and sheet metal. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it has gone uh, from a 1975. My body guy promises, my body guy promises to take lots of photos and videos Good. so I can show the world how you can butcher a car from the end of the series all the way back to the beginning of the series. I was going to say, you're going to take this, this is a Firebird that you started out, that started out as a 70, you turned it into an 81, and then, oh no 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 oh, no! That isn't... one, that the seventy that we turned into an eighty-one back in the back in the eighties, that's right. staying exactly as is. Oh, I'm not staying... changing that car. Oh, that would. Oh, wait that's a minute. The, that's the fast car. So you're taking the that's the one that's getting the full two six second style chassis. That's okay. basically a. a, a... A six-second race car with plates is what that car is. Right, with, with that happens to look this like a fire. This is the one that this is the one that everybody says is my wife's car. Right. <laughs> so this is this started out as maybe one. You're going to turn this one back into a seventy. Yeah, yeah, because because we have nothing to do. I need a scorecard. <laughs> I, I don't know. I need I need this written down. I got it. Yeah. You know what, John? I, I just what? like beating my head against. The wall. You do. <laughs> and the other thing is, we're looking forward to seeing the videos that are um, well. From the, I know you're going to do it for the other car. I don't know if you're going to do any with this car, but if you do, we're looking forward to them. Yeah, totally. Oh, there'll be plenty of videos. <laughs> That's a given. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> John, That's thank crazy. you so much for the call, my brother. All right, guys. Well, yeah, happy new year. Hope everybody's new. Yes. Uh, we'll happy new year. Listening. We'll talk to you real talk soon. You. Keep us posted. Right, Thanks. Bye-bye. Talk to you soon. Bye. Okay. 516-256-9510. That was Chester John, <laughs> the masochist that he is. <laughs> well, uh, we went on a nice long conversation on the phone yesterday, and uh, he was catching me up to speed in depth. And, yeah, he goes through a lot of stuff. I mean, there's a lot of work in those cars. <laughs> there is. There is just, just for, by what he talks about and how he does it. It's just it's incredible. Everything <laughs> from problem solving the stuck bolt to fitting components. I mean, you know, you run the gamut with a, with a project like that. It's not for the faint of heart, and not everybody no. should even attempt it, but... It almost makes me feel kind of inferior. Just all I did was just pull a wheel well out of a car yesterday, and I f feel like the, I moved a mountain. Yeah. John is up to it, though. John is up to it. <laughs> yes, um, very much so. Very, very much so. But yeah, that was the... I had that issue with the uh, trying to dip the... Uh, dip that part from the fender into, um, into some used motor oil thinking it was going to be... Uh, God's gift to remedies, and it wasn't. There's it, it a fellow miserable. I follow on YouTube, and he does a lot of tests like that between penetrance and tools and chemicals. And one of the, and I know in one of his tests, he did do the tried and true, drop it in a bucket of oil for like a week. And mm -hmm. the other one was make the transmission fluid slash oil slash toothpaste slash something <laughs> mixture, regatta, whatever, and throw it in there. You know, and, and he does a... Um, you know, an honest analysis of whether the stuff works or not. But mm. 
Yeah, well, you know how I feel about penetrant oil. But I must, I love the inductor. The inductor. Well, the inductor is the penetrant oil on steroids, you know. Yes. The thing with the penetrant, truthfully, is, and I think we're, a lot of us are guilty of this, myself included at times. When you're working on a car and you find that stuck, rusted bolt or fastener, you, you need it off now because you need to yeah. get the job done. The penetrant needs to work. It needs to sit on there. And, right. And the one thing you don't want to take is time because you just want to get the job. So yesterday, just case in point, I had the FJ up on the lift. I went down to the shop because I knew nobody was there and I could, you know, wouldn't be bothering anybody. I threw it up on the lift. I want to flush the brake fluid, do a nice, good, complete brake fluid flush. Good. Which I did. But while I'm under there, I had the can of penetrant and I sprayed every nut or a bolt or a clip that I could see that I may want to take apart in the future. That's pretty smart. I just sprayed the bejesus out of all of them and right. You know, and let it don't get drive in. the car. Don't drive the car in the rain because once you hit one puddle, that's all going to go away. Then. Well, but the good thing with the penetrant, if it works as it's advertised, and a lot of them do, it will creep into the threads and it'll get into those fasteners. You would hope. Well, <laughs> see, that's the thing with time. It can. You know, like th- this. This, and I've done forensics. I've, I've actually done it. I've taken. I always wondered why the brake line nuts freeze so. You know, you, you, you're on it. You're on it. It moves, and then the whole tube twists. Yep. So I've actually cut those in half to see the interface between the inside of that fitting and the tube. And you know, the results are sometimes surprising, but uh, whatever. You know what? I, like I said, it, it's better to do that than and have half a shot at maybe getting somewhere sure. than to not do it. Well, how does the underside of the FJ look? Because I remember the underside of my Subarus, well, one of them in particular, which really lived on Long Island most of its life, looked awful, Ray. I mean, literally, there were bolts that were like chunks were missing from them. There was such such rust and and and, and what decomposition going on under there yeah. that I would not. I was looking to take the drop the gas tank out of that car once, and I said, "No way!" Slid right out from under it. I said, "I'm not going anywhere near this." Yeah. How does the How does the FJ look? It's it's got rust, but I, it's what I would consider normal rust for a vehicle of that age and mileage. Right. Not crazy, flaky, heavy, heavy rust. Uh, enough so that I can you know I can I can do some uh, you know rust preventative painting and all. It's it's like I said, it, it's not you know, worrisome where it's like mm-hmm. oh my god this is going to fall apart. So and the chassis looks great. You know it's got a truck chassis. It's up high. That's all fine. Sure. So yeah, I think it was you know it's average, but not uh, not over the. You know, I mean, I'd like to see it be less rusty, but I always, I always say that, you know. Of course, of no. course. But it looks like it spent a lot of time on asphalt and not a lot of time on dirt like my Pathfinder. <laughs> that right. that you, you touched it with a screwdriver and you create a big hole no matter where you touched. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> where, wherever you poked it, you got a quarter size hole wherever you poked that chassis. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you would, don't do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> don't right. test it. It will fail. <laughs> yes. Um, Failure. So so, something that didn't fail. Let me. I just want to get through the last couple of entries here. Memorable moments. Um, uh, In August, we had we had our own little faux pas here in the show because the cable company that I use, we had some power outages, and we went out, and I lost internet for a couple of weeks. So I had to do the show through my phone, which it sucked. It was terrible. What a catastrophe that was. Oh, we couldn't do calls. I mean, just the connection. Yes. So thank God we're past that. That was that one time that you were on, literally, you went, okay, we were going on the air, and then you disappeared, literally. And I'm like, hello? Am I talking to them? Where is everybody? Hello? Kind of what happened this morning is we were going on, and I, I lost my, uh, my, my feet on my computer. Right. So we, we, we've dealt with a lot of stuff this year. And then, of course, we ended the year just last week with Pirate Paul, our good friend Pirate Paul, sitting in for you, Chris. Paul is definitely an, uh, an, the honorary motor mouth in this group. Oh, of course. No, no, doubt. no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> and that's how we ended the year. So, you know what? We, I just look back at that and say, boy, all the crap we went through last year, just with this show, just this show is a little microcosm of our lives. We do a lot of other stuff. Sure. Just what we went through with this, if we can get through that and improve on it, which we did, we made things better throughout the year. I think we did. I think we got a shot at getting through this year. <laughs> Throw it at us. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> We're shooting. We're shooting for twenty years on the air. 
That'll be next year. So I tell you what, we're down to the bottom. We, we only have a few minutes left in this show. So mm-hmm. if you have any closing thoughts you want to bestow on us, please, please do that. What are your, what are your hopes for next year? Well, no, I, I love, you know, you know me, I love the show. And like you said, it, it started out as, as a thought in, between two individuals over dinner. And I always said there isn't a radio show on Long Island that, that's kind of local, that's, that's kind of focused and targeted to a, a local audience that Long Island has got one of the greatest car guys, the greatest auto activists are here, are there. I mean, hey, I'm, I'm on the mainland. I'm not on an island, but right. I spent most of my life there. And it was just, we got together, myself and a good friend of mine, Tony Trincilla, and we sat down and we made an appointment for September 11th, 2001, to go and meet with the program director at WHPC, which turned out to be an eventful day and not because we had an appointment to do a radio show, but it was because we, two buildings went down, but uh, we made an appointment and we got there and we spent all of 30 seconds talking to uh, the illustrious Jim Green, who said, you start on January 3rd, now get out of here, we're evacuating the building. And, and we did. Right. And, and uh, it started then. And I remember the first show we did was was a complete mess. And it was a lot of fun, but just a complete mess. The second show we did, I busted the uh, the gas tank on my Crown Victoria, hit something on the Bell Parkway. And we filled the studio with gas fumes because <laughs> Tony and I tried to fix. And I remember poor Kim going... What is this? Is show number two, and these guys are completely fumigating this. That we had they had to fumigate the studio, I should say, because it, it, it permeated of gasoline, right? But it was it all turned out pretty well. Kim started talking to us again. That's kind and, of like the shows where I filled the studio with brake cleaner and or carburetor <laughs> cleaner because I sprayed it all over the place as a demonstration, right? A little different. Which, which of course, is one of our greatest videos on YouTube, yeah. How to Solve a Sticky Steering Wheel, right. <laughs> which was, it's one of those things that I used to love to do. I would walk in and go, Ray, I got a problem. It's a personal problem, but I have a sticky steering wheel. And you just, you just picked right up on that and was like, well, I, I have a solution for you. It's All called right. break, break clean. Really? Break clean? <laughs> I, I have another way to do that, which we'll talk about another late, later day, because we have to go now. It's time to get out of here, Chris. Yes. We have to start a new year. We'll be back next year with more Motor Mouth Radio. So what do we always say to our listeners? Don't follow us home and don't make this new year a failure like I'm doing. Right. For Chris Witzer, Ray Guarino, Motor Mouth Radio, out. We'll see you next week. See ya.